beautiful out here. It's also hot. <laughs> and it doesn't help that with the sophists, well, we kind of got ourselves in a sticky situation. Kind of a, actually, really kind of bad situation. Although it may not seem like it at first. Right, Pythagoras says, or concludes, that everyone is right in their beliefs. Everyone has true beliefs. And Gorgias goes the you know, direct opposite direction and says everyone is mistaken in their beliefs. Everybody has false beliefs. There, there is no truth. Right? Yeah, not even, wow. Maybe not even saying, you know, everybody's just mistaken and there is a truth, but just going so far as that there is no truth to be mistaken about. That's a pretty extreme conclusion. Hmm. So we, we, you know, with these these two guys, we <laughs> very definitely are stuck, you know, between a rock and a hard place. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Okay. Well, Protagoras starts with the notion that all knowledge is based on perception. I mean, we talked about this before. All knowledge is based on perception. I perceive greens and browns, blues. I feel heat. I hear bird song, right? I hear and see all kinds of things. And based upon that perception, that's how I have knowledge. Yeah. Uh, but people still disagree, right? If somebody were here, they would perceive things slightly differently than I did. It, there might be some disagreements. I might claim that the bird song is one kind of bird and they would say it's a different one. I might claim that it's 95 degrees out here and they might say, well, no, it's only 87. Right? <laughs> There's all kinds of ways that we would disagree or could disagree. Not would, but could. Well, Protagoras says, well, since, you know, this is what knowledge is based upon, this perception, you know, even though there's disagreement or since there's disagreement, everyone is right. Everyone has true beliefs. Hmm? Gorgias kind of goes the other direction. He's still relying on the idea that knowledge is based on perception. In fact, that, that's what knowledge is, right? For both of them, that's what knowledge is, is perception. It's what you experience. Okay. Well, you know, Gorgias takes it even further. Look, look, since there's this, you know, disagreement about perception, um, you know, even if, even if something existed, by the way, nothing does exist, right? Because there's no truth. Even if something existed, we wouldn't be able to comprehend it. Even if we could comprehend it, we wouldn't be able to talk about it. Now, since, you know, nothing exists, and even if it did exist, we couldn't comprehend it. And even if we could comprehend it, we wouldn't be able to talk about it or communicate about it. Uh, there's no truth. Nothing is true. Now, you might have heard various versions of this argument before or you know these conclusions anyway maybe not necessarily these arguments but these conclusions um i am sure you've heard something along the lines well you know everybody's right right you you know you can believe whatever you want to believe and therefore whatever you believe is true that's true for you this is true for me all truth is relative people are fond of saying all truth is relative all right everybody's right right if all truth is relative everybody's right no matter what you believe, everybody's right. And there are even some, like Gorgias, who says, <laughs> everybody's wrong, right? There is no truth. Everybody's wrong. Um, okay, well, well let, let's, let's bring Protagoras over here. Protagoras, all right, come on, come over here. Now, Protagoras, you say everyone is right, right? Okay, good, all right, everybody's right. Uh, no matter what they believe, Everyone's right. Okay. Uh, Gorgias says everyone's wrong. Is he right? Huh. I say that sometimes people are mistaken in their beliefs. Am I right? Because if Gorgias is right, everyone's wrong, and you say everyone's right, and now we have a contradiction. And I say sometimes people are mistaken in their beliefs. Am I right? I mean, either you say I'm right or, or you say I'm not right. Or my, my beliefs aren't right. And if I am right, then you've rejected your own contradiction. Or they rejected your own conclusion. If I say, if you say that I'm not right, you've rejected your own conclusion. That's kind of a problem, Protagoras. Well, well, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for stopping by. Well, maybe we'll have more luck with Gorgias. Gorgias, come, come on over here. Okay, now Gorgias, you, you say everyone's wrong. 
There is no truth. Okay, there's no truth. Everyone, there's no truth, no matter what they say, no matter what reasons they offer. There is no truth. Okay, everyone's wrong. I including you? Okay. Uh, there's no truth, including the statement there is no truth. That's not true. Okay. What about all those reasons that you've offered for your conclusion? I mean, it's a rather lengthy argument. Are any of those reasons true? So now I have no reason to accept your conclusion? And your conclusion rejects itself? Okay. Well, well thank you for stopping by, Gorgias. This is the problem with these kinds of conclusions. If you say everyone's right, and at least one person, right? if you say everyone's right, then there's in fact no disagreement. But there is disagreement. right? There's lots of disagreement. Uh, if you say everyone's right, and I say, well, I think some people are mistaken, either I am right or I'm wrong. If I'm right, then not everyone's right, and that conclusion goes away. Or if I'm wrong, <laughs> then that conclusion goes away. Right? Um, that conclusion is very deeply self-defeating in some deeply important ways. I mean, it's not necessarily within itself, self but the minute that there's a single disagreement, right, that conclusion is wrong. So that's a deep problem. And even the statement, there is no truth, well, including that one, <laughs> that conclusion is explicitly self-defeating. It rejects itself. So we can't accept either one of these conclusions and be rational. We can't. We can't accept either one of these conclusions and be rational. They, these conclusions reject themselves. All right. But these conclusions are nevertheless the products of a deductively valid argument, which means if the premises are true, the conclusion must be true. If you reject the conclusion, you have to reject at least one of the premises. Which one? So by now, I think you're probably familiar with our plan, our structure here, right? Uh, you've seen this argument. Here's Protagoras' argument. And his conclusion rests on one of these premises. Well, we can't just reject a conclusion and walk away. We can't just reject a premise and walk away. If we reject a premise, we are committed to its logical contradictory. Here are the logical contradictories. Now, uh, if you reject one of the premises, you are committed to one of these. So which one and why? Now, when we looked at Annex Manor and Annex Menis, we had to choose between the two. This time you have to, <laughs> you got to reject both Protagoras and Gorgias. Both those, their conclusions are self-defeating. Well, uh, here is Gorgias' argument. You've seen this before. Uh, and it rests, you know, it's a very lengthy argument. <laughs> uh, so, but it rests on these premises. Thankfully, there's fewer premises than in the whole argument, all, all the li lines in the argument. So if you reject one of these premises, you are committed to one of the, it, the, the logical, excuse me, you're committed to its logical contradictory. So here are the contradictories based on the uh, premise, uh, from rejecting the premises. So for, for each of Protagoras and Gorgias, which one, right, which premise are you going to reject? And how are you going to justify that logical contradictory?